Unit 2, the name of the topic is The Principle of Effective Demand. Introduction J.M. Keynes is often referred to as the father of macroeconomics. Keynes has published his book titled The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money. Keynes rejected the classical theory of full employment, equilibrium, and therefore invalidates Say's law of markets. Further, the Keynesian theory is demand oriented, that is, it focuses on demand. The Keynesian theory stresses on effective demand as a very important factor in determining the level of income and employment. According to J.M. Keynes, the level of income and output in an economy is determined by the level of employment. And the level of employment is determined by the level of effective demand. Therefore, greater the level of effective demand, greater would be the level of employment. Further, Keynes theory is called as general theory. This is because it deals with all levels of employment, that is, less than full employment and more than full employment. According to Keynes, an economy can be in an equilibrium position at any level of employment. Keynes always tried to prove that full employment is not the normal feature of an advanced economy, but rather Underemployment equilibrium is its normal feature. Further, the classical economists were always concerned with long-run equilibrium, while Keynes attach greater importance to short-run equilibrium. Let's understand what is effective demand and also understand about the aggregate demand function and aggregate supply function. Now let's understand the meaning of effective demand. In simple words, effective demand means total demand for goods and services. Therefore, greater the level of effective demand, greater will be the level of employment in the economy. Effective demand implies the total expenditure on consumption goods and on investment goods at any equilibrium level of employment. Therefore, we have an equation here that is effective demand is equal to total of consumption expenditure that is represented by C plus investment expenditure that is represented by I. If you look at the diagram here towards the upper left part, you will understand that effective demand takes place at a point where aggregate demand as well as aggregate supply curves intersect each other. So this is the point where effective demand is determined. In addition to this, effective demand is determined by two factors that is aggregate demand price and aggregate supply price. The very first determinant is aggregate demand price. So what is aggregate demand price? Aggregate demand price is the amount of money which entrepreneurs expect to receive from the sale of output which is produced at a particular level of employment. So this means that by employing certain level of workers and by selling a particular product, entrepreneurs expect that a minimum level of money they must receive. That is aggregate demand price. Now let's understand the diagram as well as the explanation of it. The x-axis represents the volume of employment while the y-axis represents aggregate demand price. This is the aggregate demand curve 
If you look at the curve, you will understand that it slopes upwards from left to right. Why? The main reason is as the employment increases, the aggregate demand price also increases. Apart from this, however, when the income increases, people tend to spend less of their income on consumption goods. Correct? Why? Because they will also like to save or invest. So thus, as output and employment increases, if you notice, the aggregate demand price rises. Okay? But till this point, after this, it starts diminishing. That is, it starts falling. And that is why we say that the slope of the aggregate demand curve diminishes as employment rises. So even this means that so even though the employment and income is rising but after reaching the maximum point aggregate demand will fall. The second determinant is aggregate supply price. Entrepreneurs during their production process have to employ certain level of laborers. This involves certain costs which they have to pay in the form of factor income or factor payments. Along with this, they also incur cost of producing the product. This makes up the total cost of production. Therefore, entrepreneurs must earn normal profits. So this is aggregate supply price. Aggregate supply price is the total amount of money which the entrepreneurs must receive from the sale of output which is produced at any given level of employment. So this means that entrepreneurs have to receive certain minimum level of money after they sell their product. If they do not get that level of money, they will incur losses. Further, they will also be required to either reduce their production as well as reduce the number of laborers that they have employed in the production process. Now let's understand the diagram and the explanation of aggregate supply price. Now in the diagram, the x-axis represents the level of employment, while the y-axis represents the aggregate supply price. This is the AS curve. The AS curve starts at the point of origin. The reason is that when there is no employment, the total cost will be zero. Further, AS curve slopes upwards from left to right. AS curve also indicates that as the level of employment increases, the aggregate supply price also increases and that is the reason AS curve slopes upwards. Further, in the diagram, NF, the point NF represents full employment point. This means that beyond NF point, the employment does not increase. So once the economy reaches this NF point, the AS curve becomes vertical. Can you see? Once the employment NF level is reached, the AS curve which was increasing, it has become now vertical. That is the straight line. This takes place at point S. This means that the level of employment cannot exceed. It cannot go beyond this NF level of employment. Thus, as AS curve shows that after point Z, any increase in aggregate supply price, that means if the aggregate supply price increases further, the employment cannot increase beyond this NF level of employment. The next question is on determination of effective demand. In this answer of determination of effective demand, there are two diagrams. Let's understand the very first diagram. 
the x axis represents the volume of employment y the y axis represents the proceeds of receipts the level of employment is determined at a point where aggregate demand price is equal to aggregate supply price so this point is called as the point of effective demand further it is at this point that the entrepreneurs expect to earn normal profits the aggregate demand curve shows the money or the receipts which entrepreneurs expect to receive while the aggregate supply curve shows the money which they must receive if they do not want to reduce the level of employment or reduce the level of production further at point e ad curve and as curve intersect each other on represents the level of employment so for entrepreneurs profits will be maximized at on level of employment further at less than on level of employment what will happen is that the ad curve will lie above the as curve can you see in the diagram ad is above the as so in this case we say that the expected sale proceeds is more than the minimum sale proceeds sale proceed means the amount that the entrepreneurs get after selling a particular product or a good so their expected sale proceed will be more than the minimum sale proceed this will happen in case of less than on level of employment where ad curve is above the as curve and that is why entrepreneurs will earn abnormal profits because their expected sale proceeds is more than the minimal sale proceeds so what will entrepreneurs do they will be promoted to increase the level of employment as well as increase the level of production further at more than on level of employment that is this part here you can clearly see that as curve lies above the ad curve that is aggregate supply curve is lying above the aggregate demand curve so this shows that the expected sale proceeds is less than the minimum sale proceeds so in this case what will happen is that the cost of production cannot be recovered and therefore entrepreneurs have to reduce their employment that is the reason we say that point e is the point of equilibrium and on is the level of equilibrium level of employment this is the second diagram of the same topic determination of effective demand let's understand this diagram onf is called as the level of full employment this is because at that level of employment the as curve becomes vertical in shape hence the level of employment at on is described as less than full employment equilibrium or under employment equilibrium why this is because at on level of employment nnf persons are unemployed so therefore in order to increase the employment we need to either lower the as curve or we need to raise the ad curve as we know keynes is concerned with short run he gave importance to aggregate demand so thus according to keynes short run employment can be increased by raising the ad curve that is from ad to ad1 so if we can increase the ad curve from ad to ad1 it will intersect the aggregate supply curve at a new point that is at point e1 further this point e1 is the new point of effective demand which gives full employment equilibrium further if the aggregate demand curve is raised beyond point e1 
then the economy will experience inflation. Thus, it is the aggregate demand function which is more important and is regarded as an important determinant in the principle of effective demand. The next question is on determinants of aggregate demand. This chart here shows the summary of Keynes theory of employment. It shows the determinants of aggregate demand. Determinants means the factors that affect the aggregate demand. The very first at the top of this chart shows the income. That is the total income depends on employment and this employment is determined by the effective demand which is the point of equilibrium. This effective de demand is determined by the intersection of aggregate demand function and aggregate supply function. Further, the aggregate demand depends on consumption expenditure, investment expenditure and government expenditure. Further, the consumption expenditure depends on the size of income and the propensity to consume. This propensity to consume is influenced by subjective factors and objective factors. Further, the investment expenditure depends on the rate of interest and marginal efficiency of capital, also called as MEC. This rate of interest depends on the supply of money and demand for money. The demand for money depends on three motives that is transaction motive, precautionary motive and speculative motive. On the other hand, we have your MEC that is marginal efficiency of capital. This further depends on the prospective yield. Prospective yield means expected rate of profit and supply price of capital asset means the cost of capital asset. 